Hi there, this is Mladen from Complementary Training and in this video I want to talk a bit um, about uh, supervised and unsupervised learning using the rolling averages uh, as an example. In this case um, we are still using uh, Philip Skiba uh, workbook uh, as, as with other videos. Uh, but in this case, instead of using a banister model, uh, I try to play with uh, two rolling averages. Uh, some in, in cycling, this is usually called the training stress balance. Uh, so you usually have um, something that's called a chronic training, uh, a chronic training load. That's a rolling average of longer duration, probably 14 to 42 days or longer. And then we have also acute training effect and that's a um, shorter duration uh, rolling average as you can see here um, we have date and we have um, in this case a training load um, expressing bike score uh, which is a common uh, training load metric for uh, for cycling using a power meter um, anyway this is just um data from uh, philip skiba workbook uh, as we can see for every day we have a you know, subtype of a training load and here we have a graph actually uh, depicting those training loads. What we usually do uh, is we set up um, rolling averages, uh, chronic and acute rolling average and we, you know, we just select um, basically random, random duration uh, it could be, you know, seven days or, you know, let's, let's set up uh, seven days for acute and uh, 42 days for chronic. And what we can see here uh, uh, is we can see um, the chronic training load that's basically saying um, how much how much training load has been accu accumulated over dur longer duration and the, the acute one is basically showing com you know um, how much being acu accumulating in a, in a shorter time time frame and if when we compare these two we can see this you know the spikes uh, of you know acute to chronic and from some training theory we, we know that if if our recent training load is is bigger than the you know the chronic training load the, the training load we are used to uh, we can expect some type of um, fatigue related syndromes and vice versa if we have training load that's uh, lower than our chronic one we can expect some tapering uh, and eventually detraining because um, the, the chronic load will start declining um, this is basically the case for something that's called unsupervised learning which means that we are just trying to find a, uh, some type of patterns in the data uh, we don't have any target variable to compare this with and um, again it's it's a you know it's a rule of a thumb it's useful uh, but it's not that precise uh, in this case uh, we are not certain what uh, what durations to take for chronic and acute rolling averages why 14 days why not seven days and, and and so forth so this is unsupervised learning which means that you know we are just kind of playing with the rolling averages to to, to gain some insight and uh, visualize the the training loads over time and periods where we can expect uh, you know fatigue related uh, syndromes and uh, uh, and tapering and eventually you know declining of the chronic training load uh, but what we can do also, and this is what I uh, did in um, in this workbook, is that we can have, for example, again using Skiba uh, workbook, we have some type of a, a training test. In this case, we have a five-minute um, power output on a bike, and um, those are uh, black dot black dots over here. So we have black dots. Uh, we can see that. Uh, the the power five minute power is increasing over time and uh, what we need to do now is to you know let's try to predict these uh, from a training load in the previous installments we used the banister model which is you know uh, 
similar also uses um, positive and negative training effect in this case positive is adaptation negative is fatigue and we can kind of uh, use a similar um, a a similar um, terminology with with the rolling average work where chronic training load is something that's actually pushing the the adaptation and the acute training load is something that might be causing fatigue and now we have a target variable which means that we have something that we want to predict in this case it's a five minute um, five minute bike power and hence uh, now we have a situation where we have um, supervised uh, learning so now we have a target variable and then we can use algorithms to uh, to kind of optimize the parameters so we have um, lowest amount of error so kind of we are trying to predict the target variable from from the from the input variables uh, and this is what what i did here uh, anyway the input the parameters of the model are the p0 which is uh, you know just an intercept we have k1 and k2 these are um, gains in the system so uh, for example if we have a chronic training load this is average um, so we are actually average over uh, amount of days so this is a the, the the parameter in this case 42 days we take the average and we multiply that by uh, the constant or the gain so we multiply this by uh, k1 we have same thing for a, acute training effect now we are using a shorter uh, now we are using a tau 2 and again we are multiplying it with a uh, with a gain of uh, let's call it acute training effect or or negative one i have also put uh, the variability inside uh, using a standard deviation so you're also using um, we are also putting this inside the model so this is a rolling standard deviation with a chronic one and we also have a uh, multiplying this with um, k uh, one and uh, one two call it k one two which is a um, a gain or a factor uh, that that says like how is a chronic training load variation affecting the uh, the, uh, the the target variable uh, i have also put the interaction which is nothing more than um, uh, multiplying the chronic training average uh, chronic uh, chronic training load and acute training load uh, and multiplying with um, with um, assigned gain factor and in this case we again use the excel optimizer to you know try to find the optimal values uh, by minimizing the error so this is a sum of square error between what's being predicted and what's being real so in this case we see that this is huge because i've been playing around with the uh, uh, with, with the factors So what I did here uh, is I played a couple of times with a couple of solutions. So let's try to find one with the least amount of error. So let's copy this. And interaction in this case is zero. As we can see, uh, we were pretty close. Uh, in predicting uh, predicting the target variable in this case the real five minute uh, bike power and you also see a trend and in this case our rolling averages were 36 for a uh, for a chronic and 19 days for acute maybe we can put more rolling averages maybe using a three models but this is more intuitive and again it comes back to a occam razor uh, concept uh, you know trying to be as simple as possible and and gain uh, information from uh, you know that simplicity we can increase the complexity of the model but we don't gain much information and we just make the model more complex um, as we can see mm, and this is this is one one concept I want to mention as well is that our uh, p0 and this um, in this area the model is not very useful uh, because you know the the, the power is is not realistic as we can see from a, a test 
uh, test power. Uh, this is happening mostly because the, the rolling average, uh, for example, if we have for the days that are um, within the rolling average, so uh, for example, if our chronic training, uh, if, if our chronic training load is average across 36 days, when we are in the first, let's say 30 days, we are just using uh, 30 days from this point to this point until we accumulate and then the, the windows start rolling down and this is evident on the chart where acute and chronic are pretty much the same because they are uh, accumulating again depends on how you how you want to calculate the these these things so we can just leave this empty um, and then just starting from uh, from the point where we actually have enough uh, data points depending on the duration of the rolling average but again, you know, you, you can start playing with that and, uh, you know, ex experiment with it. One thing uh, worth mentioning is that depending on how you set up the constraints of the system, we might we might get different results. For example, uh, we might constrain the, the max power. So we might say, okay, you know, it, it's impossible to get the power so high. And then we can constrain the optimizer to find the, to try to find the uh, parameters of the model that that suits the constraints uh, anyway we, we want to minimize the error uh, but we also make we want to make sure that this looks uh, I would say this looks that some, that might be something realistic so for example we might uh, constrain for a minimum uh, sorry for a minimum value and a maximum value but we can also constrain the variability so maybe the model is in data science that's called overfitting so we are fitting the data points perfectly uh, but the model might be like jumping up and down and that's not biologically realistic because the uh, five minute power output is not you know that kind of um is not that uh, variable in the real life so the model can overfit that's why we, we can put constraints on that i'll quickly show you uh, the solver so these are all the constraints you can find it in uh in, in the workbook and then you can play with these things so in this case i i constrained uh, the optimizer um, let's take another example uh, let's use this one now we can see um, different result uh, probably using different uh, constraints i had issues with with the Excel optimizer, sometimes I get, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not so sure it, it finds uh, a global optimum. It might find the local optimum. So you, you might need to rerun the optimizer a couple of times to, to find something that, that seems logical. In this case, um, the chronic training load is 69 days and the acute one is 11 days. And then we can see that actually the chronic training load is having a negative effect uh on on the on the power output and the acute one is having a positive training effect again the optimizer will and optimizer will find the model that you know suits the data points but then uh, it's it's us that needs to you know make uh, make some sense out of it let's try another one uh, let's say this one Pretty much, um, pretty pretty similar, but we have this uh, huge jump here that we cannot you know rely to. But in this case, we have a positive effect of the chronic training load and negative effect of the acute one. And in this case, we have 31 and 19. Uh, we can also check the variability, and we can see that. Uh, being the the training that's variable in those rolling averages is is uh, having a positive effect on a, on a, on a on a five minute power. Again, this is something that we might we might play with. Um, it takes time to optimize it. As I said, it usually comes up with a solution that might not be that actually might be overfit, and it's up to us to select uh, the best model. Again. Um, you can play with changing or kicking out uh, the standard deviation so you can say okay i'm only interested in the average 
and you know we can we can leave the interaction as zero uh, just make sure to set up the constraints in the optimizer in the solver to you know kick out those and not not optimize for those values uh, hopefully this makes sense from uh, from explaining the um, supervised and unsupervised learning uh, as i said in unsupervised learning we don't have a target variable we just try to find the pattern in the data and we don't have anything to to compare it with so we don't know if this is uh, useful or not or precise or not and um, that's like pretty similar in using like seven days rolling average and 42 days rolling average for acute and chronic we are not certain is if this is the best number or not with um, uh, supervised training uh, with a supervised learning uh, we have a target variable we are trying to predict and in this case uh, we can use optimizer to you know try to find the best parameters that give uh, least amount of error again we need to uh, we need to make sure that the model is not overfitting mm, so we get a perfect match but it's not logical to have these spikes in a in a, in a predicted power again something to play with thanks for watching and um, hope you learned something